to the Rohingya people who are suffering so much and who have been so marginalized and so ill-treated, but also for the Rakhine people and for the government and for the democracy and for everybody in that nation. And the prayer is this, make me a channel of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring love. Where there is injury, pardon. And where there is doubt, faith. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there is despair, let me bring hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. Grant that I may never see so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love with all my soul. Make me a channel of your peace. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in giving to all men that we receive, and in dying that we're born to eternal life. Let me say to you, my Rohingya friends, we will continue to stand with you, we will continue to speak up for you, and we'll continue to speak up for everybody in Burma who wants true freedom, equal rights, and human rights. Because if we believe in human rights, then we must believe in human rights for all human beings. The universal declaration of human rights is exactly that, universal. And no human being can be denied those rights. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ben, for your very powerful speech for us. Now, following speaker is with me, Uncle Nurul Islam, American Rohingya Organization. I thank you all of you on behalf of the Rotia community in the UK. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I thank all of you on behalf of the Rotia community in the UK for participating in this peaceful process. Actually, this protest is for, I mean, that's to stop killings, mass killings in Arakan, the state of Burma, and at the same time, to demand for the immediate restoration of peace in the region. And uh, around one, more than one week, in Arakan, there is an organized killings against the Muslim community. And the worst is that the security forces, Long Thing and Nasaka, and the police, instead of giving protection to the helpless, to the innocent, to the people, and save the lives and the properties of the people. They all be, they become the killers. And these security forces combined with the extremists, they are rampaging, they are going round the villages, sometimes house to house, house, and they are killing the people. This must be stopped. This must be stopped right now. A number of people has already been done. The case. It is very difficult to get exact number of the death toll. But the estimate is that we have at least 1,200 lives. And there are at least 30 villages burned on. 
and 30,000 people become homeless. And at least 3,000 houses burned down. And included the mosques and the places to work. This kind of thing cannot be tolerated. We demand very strongly. Please stop it. Rest of peace in our car. If you could control right now, five minutes before, you would save a lot of life. And, and we demand, people are fleeing from our car. Many people reach in vote in, our, in, 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 in Bangladesh. We request the Bangladesh government to give them shelter and proper protection. They need international protection because they have no national protection. Their home is not sick. So it's fine. And we don't want more violence. It's too much. And we want peaceful coexistence in Iran. Arkhan is a place where two great civilizations join together, Islam and the Muslim. So we want the two major communities there, the Rohingya, the Muslims, and the Buddhists, the Rakhine. We have to, we live together for safety. Together. And we have to live together in the same place, breathe in the same air, and drink in the same water. There is no point to hostile to each other, no point to foreign hostility. So we request the religious leaders of the both sides. And to come to the town, far to rest of peace, save the life of the people. We don't want any more destruction. At the same time, this is an organized conspiracy against the Muslims. An organized. So we request the government, we ask upon the government and international community to find the underlying cause of this fight. It is very important. And we also argue about the Tenshin government. As a government, you have the responsibility to give life and to, 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 to protect the lives of the people and to save the dignity and the honor of the people. You have to do this, but you are not doing it. Your own security forces are siding with the extremists. They are firing the people. They are shooting at the people. It is never acceptable. And these, you are partly responsible for this. Your local government is particularly involved behind this. So we don't want it anymore. So we are, we are, we are asking to end the ongoing violence and address the underlying issue And to deploy adequate armed forces. Armed forces. We don't like anymore so-called security forces in the region. So, and you send the armed forces to the trouble areas in order to control the situation and restore law and order, peace and save the life of the innocent. And to form peace committees, to form peace committees with Muslims and Rakhine elders and the leaders, we together with the unbiased officials, unbiased officials, it's very important. And to operate unbiased humanitarian activities. This is very important. There is humanitarian crisis looming in the area. Because the extremists, they have destroyed all of the stuff. They have carried rice and essentials and stuff from the small They keep the, all these things beyond the race of the Muslim community. So this is very important. Yes, the 
So serious, before the outfits of serious intervention, we need humanitarian assistance there. Human relief operation should be there. This is very important. So the other thing is the media. Media is completely biased, one-sided media in Bhopal. State media as well as all media available campus and the rest of them, they are talking against the Muslim. They are not depicting, producing true message, true information. That's why we demand for the independent and and and, and, and news media. They, they should get access to the area. And to disarm the so-called security. This is very important. Because the dancers are killing, they are the killer. They are part of the killing for killers. They, they should be immediately disarmed. They should be immediately disarmed, these low-wing and the, and the, and the, the Nashaka posts. And they have no dead body we have received in the return to the people. Not a single dead body has returned. Many dead bodies, many people disappear. But these dead bodies should be returned to the people for the racial marriage. And to the international community, we ask the UN may adopt a strong resolution that this morning UN observer teams has already reached our camp. We welcome this move. And if necessary, I say, we demand for the humanitarian intervention in the region. Humanitarian intervention, not for any other purpose, but to save the life of the people and to operate the um, relief operation. And pressurize the Burmese government to control the situation right now, right now, right now, without, 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 without any test of, test of time. And we request the Bangladesh government to give the fleeing people from Arakan adequate protection. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambanuru. The next speaker, I would like to advise um, Mark Famina from Burma Campaign UK. Uh, thank you very much. I didn't actually know I was going to be speaking. Um, so I haven't prepared anything. I think um, you all know that Burma Campaign UK has supported the rights of the Rohingya people of Burma for many years. And that we have taken a lot of criticism for doing that, and that has increased recently. But I want you all to know that despite all the attacks that we've had against us, we're going to keep campaigning for human rights for the Rohingya people. We're not going to be intimidated by the threats that we are receiving because of what is taking place at the moment. We recently visited Burma for the first time. We got a visa in eight years. We visited Burma legally for the first time. And Anna, Anna Roberts and myself visited. And the biggest impression we had, and the most surprising impression we had, spending weeks in Burma, was how endemic prejudice against Muslim people, not just against the Rohingya, but against all Muslims in Burma. It was really shocking to witness, and in more than 40 countries that I've visited around the world, I've never experienced prejudice like that before, just commonly and openly expressed without anyone feeling that it was wrong to do so. There needs to be a concerted effort from the government of Burma, from the international community, and from leaders of Burma's democracy movement to challenge this prejudice because everyone has not been fighting for a democratic Burma, for that to be a Burma where religious and ethnic minorities are still persecuted and still discriminated against, and where racist language is commonly used and commonly acceptable. That's not what everyone has been working towards. What has happened in the recent week, recent weeks, 
the terrible, terrible events. What needs to happen now is the urgency of stopping the attacks that are taking place and the urgency of providing humanitarian assistance for those who have suffered, who have lost their homes. And that includes everybody who has suffered and lost their homes. Burma Campaign UK, we get accused of being pro-Rohingya. Other people say we are anti-Rakhine. We are not anti-Rakhine. We are not pro-Rohingya. We are pro-human rights. And we will not be intimidated or stop campaigning on the basic human rights principles. We follow the universal declaration of human rights and the principles that are there. And everybody should be following that and basing what they do on those fundamental principles. Born out of genocide, born out of the horrific events that came out of World War II, these were the standard principles for the rights of all people around the world. They are universal. They apply to everybody. And they should be upheld, and everybody should be working for them. And we will keep working for those universal human rights for everybody in Burma, regardless of race and regardless of religion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark from Burma Campaign UK. Now, the next speaker, I would like to invite a representative from Restless Being UK. Please welcome Restless Being UK to speak.
to, in my own opinion, absolutely unacceptable. And the fact that this is unacceptable, we shouldn't tolerate it and accept it. And so I would just request that we continue this kind of positivity, collective, demanding, and continue to fight for, these, for this community, simply because, I mean, there are so many people out there